What's going on guys? My name is Jason Lee. Welcome to this channel. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to get into physical therapy school. So physical therapy school is quite competitive. As of April 2022, there are over 17,000 unique applicants submitting over 93,000 PT applications, and there are way less seats than that. So with that many applications, it's quite hard to get a seat for a DPT program. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys the necessary steps that you guys need to take in order to set yourself up to be able to apply to PT school. If you guys are new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button for more physical therapy related content. So the first thing I want to talk about is your major and prerequisites. So your major doesn't matter too, too much. I know people who applied as political science majors, psychology majors, biology majors, and even business majors. I personally applied as a social and behavioral sciences major, but the most important thing here is your prerequisites. Your prerequisites are simply just courses that you need to complete in order to get into a DPT program. Prerequisites vary from school to school, but the most common prerequisites tend to be anatomy and physiology 1 and 2, chemistry 1 and 2, biology 1 and 2, physics 1 and 2, statistics, and psychology. If you're going into your senior year or you're a current senior applying to PT schools, you may not have all your prerequisites completed, and that's okay. Many schools can actually still accept you as long as you complete those prerequisites by the end of the year. For example, I got accepted into PT school and I had yet to take Physics 1, Physics 2, and Anatomy and Physiology 2. So that's three prerequisites that I had not yet taken at the time of application. So the second thing I want to talk about is your GPA. Your GPA is going to be one of the most important factors considered during the admissions process. It's what gets your foot in the door for interview opportunities and more, and many schools that actually have a minimum GPA requirement just for you to be able to even apply. This GPA tends to be about a 3.0, so if your GPA falls below that, you should branch out to other schools that have a lower minimum. For example, University of Kentucky has a minimum GPA requirement of a 2.75, while George Fox University has a minimum GPA requirement of a 3.25. So the next thing I want to talk about is the GRE exam. <sighs> if you're someone like me that hates standardized testing, I have some good news for you. Many schools are actually not requiring the GREs anymore for PT programs. Some schools that don't require the GRE anymore is Boston University, Chatham University, East Carolina University, and Northwestern University. However, if you do plan on applying to schools that require the GREs, I recommend you start studying sooner than later. There are many resources out there that are really affordable or free that can help you with your GRE scores. I recommend a score of at least 150 on both the quantitative and verbal reasoning sections since that's the minimum requirement that many schools have. One of the resources that I used to study for the GREs was the PowerScore 700. The PowerScore 700 comprises 700 of the most commonly appearing vocabulary words on the actual GRE exam. I studied about 10 to 15 words every single day for about two months, and when I took the actual exam, I recognized about 80% of the words, so I would say it's definitely worth it. You also can't go wrong improving your vocabulary, so I highly recommend the PowerScore 700. I will link the PowerScore 700 in the description below. All right, so the fourth thing I wanna get into is your observation hours. So this one's important, not just because it's required by PT schools, but because it's important to have actual experience in physical therapy so that you understand what this career entails. I mean, think about it, you're about to invest over $100,000 and three years of your life into PT school, so it's definitely important to know what you're getting into. As for the admission side of things, I would have at least two different settings of observation and having at least 200 total hours of observation. Many schools require at least one inpatient and one outpatient setting, but they also realize that inpatient settings are extremely hard to get because of the pandemic, so they may recommend but not require them. Each school has their own requirements when it comes to observation hours, so you should do your research accordingly on their websites. So the other requirement to get into physical therapy school is letters of recommendation. This can be from either a professor, a physical therapist, or even both. Many schools actually require two or three letter of recommendations, so you're probably going to be reaching out to both physical therapists and professors. This letter is a testament on behalf of the writer that you possess the necessary skills, positive demeanor, and the potential to be successful in the realm of physical therapy. So this is a big reason as to why you should build a connection with your physical therapist and professors. Go to your professor's office hours, ask them questions, and build a connection so that when the time comes, they are willing to write you an awesome letter. So this one's a bonus, but it's also important, and that's having a resume and being CPR certified. 
So I applied to 10 different DPT programs, and 4 of them required me to be CPR certified, and 3 of them asked me to upload a resume. Not to mention at one of my interviews for PT school, they had my resume right in front of them and they started asking me questions based off what I had on my resume. So definitely have those two things ready when you're applying to PT schools. So majority of PT programs, you will be applying using PTCAS, which is a centralized application system that allows you to apply to multiple schools at the same time. So you're going to want to go ahead and create an account. However, keep in mind that not every single school out there uses PTCAS. Some have their own application systems, so do your research accordingly. PTCAS is also where you will be writing your personal statement, which will give you the opportunity to share your own story and help you distinguish yourself from others. It also helps the admissions committee look at you holistically instead of just through numbers such as your GPA and GRE. It gives the admissions committee an idea of what your personality is and your intentions on pursuing this career, so make sure you spend a lot of time on your personal statement. Well, there you have it. Remember that this is just a general outline for PT programs. Every school has their own specific requirements and directions for applying, so make sure you do your research accordingly. In the future, I'll be making more specific videos on GPA, GREs, personal statements, PTCAS, and more, so make sure you guys subscribe for that. If you found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button, I would greatly appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and good luck on your PT journey.